ultimately answer your question about what will um, inventory look like, in my opinion, um, this is just me, I believe that uh, homes, home prices are not gonna come tumbling down. I don't foresee home prices getting slashed 50%. I do see a recession. I see a recession coming. Um, I, there's already indicators going on. But again, there are too many people today and there are too many people today with money. So while I say that, a recession obviously affects everyone, okay? But I feel that demand will continue to be high. Say you have 10 buyers for a house right now. I think once we get into this recession, that's coming. I think we'll see, you know, three to five buyers. I think the, the you know, it'll basically the separate. Shrinks. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And I think people's cash will dry up. So that'll make it a little tougher and that'll loosen up demand a little bit. But again, people have to want to sell. So there's no inventory. So, you know, I, I don't know if we will see much inventory. Yeah. And again, I've... you know, people ask me about foreclosures and like, some people say, oh, they, they overpaid for their home in 2020. Okay. Well, if somebody, if somebody is losing their home, they lost their job, can't pay the bills, whatever the case may be, that bank is not going to turn around and sell it at a discount. They're going to no. sit on that asset for several years and try and figure it out. They'll use, they'll use it as a write-off. They don't care. Mm -hmm. you know. So to think that there's going to be a ton of foreclosures because some people may have overpaid in 2020 or 2021, that's just not going to come anytime soon. Yeah, I've seen a handful of headlines that <clears throat> that there's supposed to be a, a major influx of foreclosures. And and I, I'm subscribed to a bunch of different uh, auction sites that have those on there. I have been seeing a little bit more. But the other thing to consider, too, is lending is so much more strict during that time frame, too. Absolutely. So the foreclosures, in my opinion, that we will see, which I do believe we will see a bunch of foreclosures, they are the ones from pre-COVID. Yes, the, they're they're just now catching up. up. Yes, because because you know this administration put a stop to that temporarily, mm -hmm. you know, and didn't let banks foreclose on on homes for a while there. So I think the the influx of foreclosures that we will see are all pre COVID issues. We will not see any type of foreclosures that stem out of COVID um, for a long time, for a while. And sometimes, again, in this market, it's so competitive and there's so much demand. Somebody will know somebody's losing their home and they will go try and buy it. Sure. If it comes to value, you know, yeah. if, if it's, they get, they get the notification that it's been pre foreclosure. They're just going to go to that seller directly because pre foreclosure does not mean it's foreclosed. It means that they have time to redeem it. And if that means selling it and getting out from underneath it, Correct. then they can do that. Correct. Yep. So it, it's going to be interesting. Um, I think that, listen, my, so my grandfather passed away last year. Again, I'm still very close with one of his, his, his one of his closest friends and, and he's heavily into real estate still. And um, we talk all the time. There's so much uncharted territory right now that what happened in 2020, you can't use old indicators, methods, sure. mindsets, whatever right now, because we're in a whole new paradigm shift. Like what has happened now? Like, yeah, that's a great way to say it. And I, I would agree. Do you think that's, Obviously, like the core principles of real estate obviously are intact, like buy what you can afford. Absolutely. Like be smart and and yeah. don't get don't get caught up in any excitement. Yeah, absolutely. I so like I, I'm always a buyer. Every day, 365 days a year. I'm I'm a buyer. Um, if I can buy an investment property, I I will buy it. Um, I always tell people, and a lot of times I end up as an agent with properties because other people are scared and they're nervous, they don't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. So if you if listen. If you can secure the asset, whether it's with your own cash, it's with a line of credit, it's with a, a mortgage, conventional mortgage, okay, and you can put 20 to 30% down on the property and the rent pays the mortgage, the insurance, the taxes, all the overhead, and you're making some money, buy the property, mm -hmm. buy it. Like a lot of people get caught up, oh, I need to cash flow X amount or this percent from this property for it to work for me. Well, if you're making money, you're making good money, and that's where you want to put it is real estate, then buy the asset. My grandfather's number one rule was if it pays for itself and I make a hundred bucks a, a month from it, just buy it. Mm -hmm. Just buy it. In, in 20 to 30 years, it'll be paid off. You own it free and clear. And mm -hmm. essentially, that that whoever occupied that property, that tenant bought you that property. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jake Hofer and I'm a real estate agent out of the state of Illinois. And it's my goal to help 100 people buy their first farm. I've been doing that with the land podcast and clips like this every single Thursday and Saturday that are released here on the channel. And to be one of those 100 people, all you have to do is if you're in the state of Illinois and I can help you, I'd be happy to do so. Number two, if you want to get connected with someone that can help you, reach out and I'll be happy to get you in contact with an agent that I would personally do business with. And the last one is if you just simply learn something, 
from the content we're putting out or you get inspired to take action, I want to know, get you out of that spreadsheet. I'm on a mission to help 100 people. Until next time, see you.